thank you for joining us for this Lexio session online. And thank you to all of you who joined the session last week. I had a strong sense of the praying community as we live streamed, and was also so glad to see that many join people joined us at the event. As we've been doing in our live sessions, we'll start with prayer, followed by a reflection on a topic relating to Sunday's Gospel. Then we will move on to the Lexio. I will read the Gospel once, and after that there will be a period of silence. At this point, you should go to the live streaming uh, with seminarian, seminarian Mark, and he'll lead you through the Lexio itself. So we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, who has taught the hearts of the faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit, grant that by the gift of the same Spirit we may be always truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we make an act of contrition, remembering that we come as sinners and beggars before our Lord. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy, and grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. So this week's readings, there's two, there will be two Gospels. There's the main Gospel, which is the Passion of Christ, which is too long to meditate on in a session of this type. And so Seminary Mark and I decided that we would focus on the first Gospel that you read as you would be entering into church if we had normal processions this year. And the question that struck me was, what kind of Messiah were those people looking for? Our fathers in faith, the Jews, believed and still believe in a Messiah who was to come. Indeed, in the last century, as they walked into the gas chambers, many Jews sang this song called the Ani Ma'ani, I apologise if I mispronounce that. And it goes like this. I believe with a complete belief in the coming of the Messiah. Even though he may tarry, I will wait for him whenever he comes. Jewish tradition at the time of our Lord affirmed that the Messiah would be, as Isaiah prophesied, a descendant of King David from the stock of Jesse that he would come as a child who would grow up to establish peace. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government is upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Prince of Peace, the Everlasting Father. He was to be a righteous judge, and it says uh, in Isaiah uh, elsewhere, he shall not judge by what his eyes see, nor decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he will judge the poor, and decide with equity for the humble of the earth, and he shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. He was to be a mighty warrior, a star will march forth out of Jacob, and a sceptre will rise out of Israel to crush the enemies of Israel. At the same time, there is another mysterious side to the prophesied Messiah. Daniel foretells the Son of Man coming with the clouds of heaven, but Zechariah tells a different story. And this is a quotation we have in relation to this week's Gospel. Behold, your King comes to you, humble and riding upon an ass. He is to be gentle in his dealings with us. A bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. The story becomes even more complex in the readings from the Book of Wisdom, which we have recently had in the weekday masses, where the foreseen righteous man annoys the wicked, who say, if the righteous man is God's son, he will help him, and will deliver him from the hand of his adversaries. 
Let us test him with insult and torture, that we may find out how gentle he is, and make trial of his forbearance. Let us condemn him to a shameful death, for according to what he says, he will be protected. Likewise, in the suffering servant prophecies of Isaiah, which we will hear on, read on Good Friday, we are told, He had no stately form or majesty to attract us, no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Like one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he took on our infirmities and carried our sorrows. Yet we considered him stricken by God, struck down and afflicted. The whole of Lent, as I suggested last week, and in particular Holy Week, shows how Christ enfleshes every aspect of the tradition. He is the child who was to be born, the beloved son of the Father. He is the righteous judge, who struck the Samaritan woman with the rod of his mouth, but brought her not to death but to life. He is the suffering servant, the righteous judge, who confronts us now, not with the anger of a king, but the weakness and meekness of a tortured slave. Palm Sunday shows us the midpoint, the king entering the holy city on the back of a donkey, ultimately the symbol of a king in time of peace, he will come in again in glory to judge the living and the dead, the Messiah who is the long desired of nations, but not before he has faced in us and for us the worst of what fallen humanity meets out, and through suffering, as a mighty warrior, conquered not, uh, not the temporal, conquer not the temporal enemies of Israel, but the enemies of all humanity, both sin and death. So now we move into the first part of the Lectio, and I will read the Gospel for the beginning of the Palm Sunday Mass. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When they drew near to Jerusalem and to Bethphage, to the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village facing you, and immediately you will find an ass tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord has need of them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfil what was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming. Humble and mounted on an ass, and on a colt, the foal of an ass. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the ass and the colt, put their garments on them, and he sat thereon. Most of the crowd spread their garments on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went before him and followed him shouted, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And he entered Jerusalem. And when he entered Jerusalem, all the city was stirred, saying, Who is this? And the crowd said, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. 